Kent Spitfire's ended Sussex Sharks' excellent recent run in the NatWest T20 Blast to move back to the top of the South Group at the expense of their hosts who lost at home by seven wickets with 34 balls to spare. Put in in front of a full house in Hove, the home team looked to their inspirational captain Luke Wright to get them off to a fly and He wasted no time in clearing the rope off Mitch Clayden. Wright was dropped next ball, but the one after that saw him try to go over the top again, only to be held this time in the deep by Darren Stevens, the batsman on his way for 12. Sussex started their excellent run when they came from nowhere to beat Hampshire a couple of weeks ago, and Matt Machen played a major role in that. With Wright failing for the first time in a while, it was left to the likes of Machen to get the runs, and the left-hander looked good. But with a score on 44 and the last over of the power play, Chris Nash couldn't get a shot off Ivan Thomas over short fine leg, where Matt Coles held on to remove the opener for 10. Four overs passed by without a boundary and just after ending that run, Craig Kachopa top-edged to pull off James Treadwell and was caught by Stevens. the informed Sharks having to settle for a total of 69 for three from their first 10 overs. George Bailey came and went quickly. Some clever bowling and excellent keeping from Sam Billings, seeing the Australian stumped for a couple. And when Machen, who top scored with 39, belted Stevens out to Alex Blake at long on, Sussex was stumbling on 82 for 5 in the 13th over. Three figures still weren't on the board when Will Beer drove Fabian Cowdery out to Coles at deep extra. And not even some trickery from Ollie Robinson could stop the rot as he picked out Adam Ball with a score on 112 for 7 in over number 18. Harry Finch tried his hardest to set something challenging with this 6 off Coles. But after Michael Yardy struck this 4 off the penultimate ball, he was out, meaning that with Finch making the best score of his T20 career of 35, Sussex scored a below par 136 for 8 from their 20 overs. Treadwell and Stevens' 8 overs combined, bringing figures of 3 for 40. It was going to be a tough total to defend, but Robinson removed Daniel Beldrummond in the first over of the reply as the batsman flicked a length ball to Machen. Cowdery and Sam Northeast were soon putting runs on the board, however, the former clearing the rope off Robinson as these two took the total to 38 in the fifth over of the reply. Northeast was out in the same Robinson over, carving the bowler to Bailey, the Kent captain with a very rare failure in this tournament this year as he departed for 13. And we had a game on when Cowdery, after making a breezy 23, clubbed a shot off Yardy to the diving beer at mid-on. The Spitfires getting to 46 for 3 at the end of the six overs of power play. In spite of that slightly dodgy start, Billings still decided to stay very positive and he was soon finding the gaps and the boundary rope. Three fours being struck in the space of five balls of both Chris Little and Beer. This reverse sweep hit with awesome power. Whatever Billings could do, Blake matched it. He made sure that neither of the shark spinners could settle, something both Yardi and Beer have done so many times in this competition when bowling in tandem. These shots had the target down to only 46 off the last 10 overs. And a huge six for Blake suggested that the winning line was going to be reached at a canter. That is indeed what happened. Simply put, Sussex were a long way short of a competitive total and that was confirmed by both Blake and Billings who made the chase all too easy as far as the majority of a crowd of 6,500 were concerned. The victory was confirmed soon after Billings hit this six. He ended on a 24 ball 39, while Blake made 52 off 32 deliveries as the Spitfires took the game by seven wickets. The match was ended in the 15th over and the easy win put Kent back on top of the South group with 14 points from 10 games, while Sussex slipped to second with 13 from 11. Both should qualify for the quarters, Kent up next against Somerset at home next Friday, while Sussex returned to Hove to take on Glamorgan on the same night.